How do we know if we're living our lives well? Are we doing the right thing? Are we with the right people? Do we have the right job? Living in the right town? Are, um, are our ambitions in alignment with something important deep within us? How do we know? And the attempts that those of us who study the mysteries have to know more than we did before, they go so far. They, they will always take us somewhere, but do they take us to the truth? And the answer is no. That's because the truth doesn't exist. There is no such thing as the truth. We have our own truth. Okay, well, does the study of the mysteries take us there at least? Again, not alone, not really. The, the intellectual ideas that we may have in studying the mysteries awaken us to the existence of paradox and ambiguity and uncertainty and the need for choice about interpretation and so on. And it gives us models that could work and new ideas that we might adopt. But it's not definitive. There is no code. And that might disappoint us. We might be used to knowing something well enough to get it right and getting a pat on the head for that, whether that pat on the head is a smile from the teacher or a big salary later in life. It's still only a pat on the head and it's given to those of us who need pats on the head. Well, that doesn't really work very well for an esotericist if you're actually studying the mystery. You have to do that without any expectation of reward. Or recognition. It simply doesn't come. You have to know that what you're doing is on the soul level for the long-term evolution of the soul, really. I mean, there are practical benefits in, in the earth plane, of course, but that's not why we do it. We do it because we are evolving souls and we do, we do some soul work by studying the, the mysteries. So, um, what is it that we use as a measure of whether we're living our lives well. Now, one thing I do is look back a year. What was my situation a year ago? And is it better now? That shows progress. Even if it's not better, but it's different, that still shows progress because any change moves you forward. That's really important. If you're stuck, you're dying. If you're changing your situation, you're living. And living is good and dying is bad in this context. By dying, I don't mean passing to the next version of life after the end of this body. I mean losing vitality. So, if you're changing, okay, good, you're moving forward. If your situation, generally speaking, is marked by better feelings, a smaller number of negative feelings and a larger number of quality of, of positive feelings. That's a good measure, isn't it? Perhaps that is the measure, how we feel, generally speaking. And what do we want by way of feelings? Certainly we want to feel happiness and joy. Do we want to feel excitement? Do we want to feel passion? A lot of people think, yes, that's really, really, really what I want to feel. Okay, but those energies are quite high vibration, and a vibration goes down as well as up. So if you have a lot of excitement, a lot of passion in your life, then you're going to have a lot of upsets, a lot of depression maybe, or depressed moments, or unhappiness, or grief, or sadness. You're going to have the other side of the coin. So choose your level of excitement a little bit, of course, you know, a lot you know, depends whether you want to handle it or not. The downs come, they do. I personally, at this age in my life, I want peace. I want a, a small number of excitements, and yet I don't feel any less joy because of that. I used to live a very exciting life, but I'm happier now to live more peacefully. And so each of us chooses... <clears throat> the level of vibration that we want to in, in, impress ourselves with in, in our life experience. 
and they, those choices evolve and change as we get older and as we get new opportunities and so on. Um, is that the answer to the question that we're just happier more of the time? Kind of, yes, it is, partly, but then there's the other side of it. How often are we feeling fear in any of its disguises? So real fear, in, a, in the terms of dread, is a very unusual feeling for most of us in the West. But what about its um, hidden qualities? For example, anxiety. For example, inhibition. For example, obedience. Worry. You know, these are all fearful emotions. Do you have those? Are you worried what life would do for you if you actually had to give up your job, you lost your job? Are you anxious about paying the bills? Are you fearful in case your relationship ends? I mean, not good. That is not evidence of spiritual station, a good spiritual station. <clears throat> and this is what we need to be um, clear about. We need to be quite ruthless with ourselves, with our self-appraisal. Do we have any of those attachments? And this is important. If we're attached to anything, if we're needing anything, then there's something imperfect in our spiritual station. However, if we are without neediness, without any of these expressions of fear, and we constantly feel enthusiasm for life, not necessarily passion or excitement, but enthusiasm, if every day is another experience of yeah, I really want this day. I'm, I'm so happy to have this day. I'm grateful for this day. I'm enthusiastic about this day, and I'm, I'm looking forward to what I might do with it. And even if I don't do anything with it, I just like having this day. In other words, you like being who you are. You like it enough to say, I'm enthusiastic about being who I am all of the time, and I'm never afraid of being who I am ever, then you're there, I would say. Those two things, you're always able to express yourself spontaneously to the fullest extent. Fearlessness in self-expression. And you're always enthusiastic, no matter what's going on, even if on the face of it it's a problem. You're enthusiastic about finding the way to solve the problem. If there's an unknown situation ahead of you, you're enthusiastic about the sense of adventure and meeting the unknown. And what gives rise to these two feelings of beingness is faith. Faith gives us enthusiasm and takes all of our fear away. With faith, you're fearless and you're enthusiastic. So how do we get faith? Where does it come from? You know, do we put ourselves in some spiritual program until faith is the end result? Yeah, or well, maybe. Maybe for you that works. It worked for me. Um, but in the end, faith is a decision. That might be a controversial thought. But it is the case in my world. I made the decision to have faith. And like all decisions, you, you make a decision and then you just notice the feedback, aware that maybe the feedback tells you you've made a wrong decision. But when the adjustment comes, it's only when it's proven to be wrong, not fearing that it might be wrong. So if you decide upon faith as a life path, you will notice whether or not you're practicing that faith by the absence of fear, the presence of enthusiasm. And if those two ways of being are not present in your life, then your faith is imperfect. And you will be tested to the nth degree. You know, you'll be taken right, right to the very edge of your comfort zone, and maybe a little bit beyond that. And if you still hold true, if you still hold on to your faith, come what may, test it to the nth degree, to the very end of it. If you do that, you'll find it's there, it works. You'll find you're bailed out. 
what can go wrong? Well, you can lose everything. You can lose your family and your money and your house and your reputation and your health and your job. You can lose all of that. That's the way it is in life. It's hard sometimes. But if you've got faith, it actually doesn't matter because you know you'll win it all back again in a better form. That's what faith is. Faith is knowing that the future is better than the past, by and large. Not all of it, but it will come good. It's nothing to do with religion or belief or anything like that. It's just optimism. But it's optimism at the level of knowledge. I know the future is better than the past. Better than this moment, too. The, everything's always getting better. That is the nature of the reality that I choose to inhabit, that things are always getting better. That's why I'm enthusiastic. It's because, like, how could anything be better than this? How, how is it possible? I'd love to see what might make my life better than it already is. Okay, that's a challenge that God responds to. There it is. There's an improvement for you. And I get more enthusiastic still. Faith. Make a decision. Practice faith.